Hey guys, uh, <clears throat> it's early August 1st morning. Um, usually I do these uh, later in the day, but I uh, figured I got nothing better to do at 6.20 in the morning, so I'm going to start doing this q and A. I I got a lot of questions. I'm going to try and answer as many of them as, many of them as I can, so uh, let's get going. Um, Aaron wants to know if I've heard of Neck Deep's cover of Green Day's Boulevard of Broken Dreams. No. And I don't know why of all songs they would choose one of the most boring Green Day songs that has ever been made. So, I don't know, I probably wouldn't go and... I wouldn't go out of my way to try and listen to the song anyway. Um, William wants to know what made me sell my old white Strat. Uh, it had a reverse headstock and uh, some Seymour Duncans in it. Um, basically... At the time, it just wasn't what I was looking for. I was playing my Les Paul a lot. Um, I don't remember why I sold it. I probably sold it to buy some other guitar. I don't know, maybe a Jackson or something like that at the time. I was I was screwing around with those a lot around, uh, around that time. Um, I mean, it sounded all right. It played all right. Um, it was extremely annoying when people would ask me what was wrong with the headstock on the guitar because it was a Jimi Hendrix remake reissue something that was that just the pickups were just changed and nobody could grasp the fact that guitars could have reverse headstocks so that got kind of annoying but I mean overall it was an alright guitar uh, Jordan asked if I like Breaking Benjamin no I don't uh, Vidix uh, says Celestion V30s or PV Sheffield speakers. I don't know if I've even used Sheffield speakers to be honest. He says my 5150 sounds crap with Celestions, but badass with my, with its own cab. Uh, Celestions aren't that good, I think. They are too vintage Beatles sounding. Um, you do realize those are vintage V30s in there. <laughs> um, it's very relative to the head. Um, I don't like my 5150 through that cab either. Uh, it definitely sounds a lot better through the 5150 cab of mine, but the Mesa fucking slays through this thing. So, I mean, it's it depends on the head. They're not just Beatles sounding. Um, Gary says, what are your hopes and expectations on the next Ava album? I hope it's different, and I hope it's good. I know what the hell his name is, uh, the drummer, I always forget his fucking name. I know he's supposed to be helping a lot with the songwriting and stuff, so, I mean, hopefully it'll be something different, but still good. Daniel says, D do you like Pop-Tarts? Not really. Um, let's see. What effect do you use in Ghost on the dance floor to make the guitar sound like that? This is from Victor. Um, I didn't use any effects. I just used the amp and the guitar. That's it. <laughs> no effects. Just switching through channels and other stuff. I mean, nothing, nothing crazy. Um, Jake says, would you consider going to Census Fails Let It Unfold You 10 year anniversary tour? I don't think I've listened to Senses Fail in like 10 years because they're just not really what I really get into anymore. So I don't know. I just don't really care about them. Um, Jake also says, have I ever listened to Knuckle Puck? Um, a friend of mine likes them. I've heard them in his car. I mean, they sound all right, but I mean, I've never really gone out of my way to listen to them. Oats the Lord. I'm sure that's your real name. Uh, it says, have you watched an anime before? Um, I mean, I used to watch Pokemon when I was younger, and I actually kind of rewatched some of it recently. Um, I guess it's technically an anime. Um, but animes in general, I just don't really get into them. Um, Anthony says, Fender American versus Mexican. Um, I mean... The Mexican stuff is usually less than half the price, and 
there's almost, to me, there's really not a lot of loss in quality. I mean, I feel like um, the American stuff looks better most of the time, but I feel like the Mexican stuff feels and looks great anyway, so I mean, I don't know. I don't really see the point in buying American if you don't have to. I mean, some people are really hell-bent on getting American stuff, but I don't know. I, most of my stuff is Mexican, so I see no problem with it. Jordan says, if Blink comes on tour near you, would you see them even if the tickets were $500? If Blink came on tour near me, I probably wouldn't even see them if tickets were $5, <laughs> to be completely honest. Definitely would not go see them if tickets were $500. Fuck that. I've seen them four times already. Um, they haven't changed the set list in like five years. More than like two or three songs. And I just don't really care to see a lot of bands these days anyway. The only bands I'll really go out and see are ones that like I haven't seen yet. That's usually it. Um, Ricardo says, is a Tube Screamer a good pedal for punk? Um, I mean, it's just a good boost pedal in general. I mean, it doesn't alter your sound that much unless you really want it to. The way I have it set up is just really just a boost. I mean, it. I could crank it up so like it does change the sound of my amp a lot, but I mean... I don't have to since I already have a great amp. I just use it as just like a little bit more boost, like I said. And uh, I mean, it depends on your amp. I mean, if you're running like a super clean amp that doesn't have much for gain options, I mean, it'll help a little bit, but it's not really going to do what you'd expect it to do. I mean, you'd have to get like an actual distortion pedal for something like that. Um, how do I get my tone? that right there that's how I get my tone Mace's rule um, William says what are your thoughts on Weezer and what albums and songs do you like from them um, my favorite album I'm pretty sure is um, what the fuck is it called I think it's Make Believe is that what it's called um, where is it yeah, I like Make Believe a lot. That was a good album. Um, Green Album, Blue Album has some good songs. Um, but for the most part, they don't have a lot of great songs. I feel like a lot of their albums have a lot of filler on them, personally. And, I don't know. For them, it's usually the singles and stuff like that that I really get into. But I do like the majority of Make Believe. Um... Tyler says, what would be a good guitar for $500? Something used, for one. Um, there's plenty and plenty of used guitars out there that are just as good as new guitars. And a lot of them come stock really, really well. I mean, if I needed a guitar for $500 and I needed to make it as best as I could, I would get a cheap Fender Mexican Strat. I'd throw like a cheap Seymour Duncan or something in there um, that, I mean, like a used one of those you could find for maybe like 50 or 60 bucks and then maybe uh, like some locking tuners or something and then uh, it would be way better. So that's what I would do. David says, how many girlfriends have you had? Um, a couple. Not that many. Um, usually anytime I'm kind of interested in a girl it, it usually lasts for a couple of years so I mean it's not like I've dated 20 girls or anything like that Ben wants to know if I'm going to cover for your strong song what's in the box um, I, I will eventually I've been meaning to I learned some of it but I just haven't really been in the mood to cover songs in like the past week or so so um, my favorite song on the new EP um, Probably tread lately. I do like that one a lot. Have ever moshed? 
No, because it's stupid. What do I think of the Swellers breaking up? I heard about it. I really couldn't care less, to be honest. Um, I I never really went out of my way to listen to them. I think I've heard like one or two songs from them. Um, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't really do much for me. Um, Jacob says, do you think you can do a CD review of Ava's We Don't Need to Whisper? Um, didn't I do that already? I don't remember. Um, I mean, yeah, eventually I'll do one if I didn't already. <clears throat> and kind of unrelated, but I bet you $100 to listen to 10 shitty radio songs. Would you take that bet? I do that every single day at work. I'm not going to tell you where I work, but I work in retail, and it fucking sucks, and I listen to garbage all fucking day. Taylor Swift, Adele, uh, Pink, uh, what the fuck's her name, uh, Vanessa Carlton, um, that fucking girl from American Idol, what the hell's her name, Kelly Clarkson, I, li I have to deal with that shit all fucking day. And it makes me want to put a bullet in my brain. Oh, God. And Katy Perry. Oh, man. I'd love to punch her right in the face. But not not before Taylor Swift. Oh, she's... She deserves a punch in the face. Um, Brandon says... I asked if I can recommend a good amp setup that costs less than $1,000. Um... I mean, you kind of left it a little open there, um, because, I mean, you, it's the difference between, you know, something for, like, a bedroom type setup and something for, like, being able to play live. If it's, if you needed something to play live and you wanted something good, obviously I'd go used. Um, some sort of half stack, I mean, you could find so many good... 4x12 cabs that are used for just a couple hundred bucks, so maybe like two or three hundred bucks, and then you can spend the majority of it on the head, which I wouldn't really skimp on. Um, what would be a good one? Um, usually you can find like Mesa Boogie uh, single rectifiers for like 700 bucks, like on guitarcenter.com. They usually have a few of those. Uh, 5150s or even the 6105s, you can usually find for like. Uh, I don't know, like seven, eight hundred dollars, or even less. I I found my fifty one fifty for like five hundred bucks on Craigslist. Um, I mean, that's that's what I would do personally. Something similar to that. Um, I mean, like I said, it's kind of hard to really recommend when I don't even know exactly the situation. Um, let's see. Who is my biggest inspiration to pick up guitar? This is from Taylor. Um, I mean, I've been listening to music a lot my whole life. And I've always really been into it. Um, my friend had a guitar um, that he didn't even know how to play. But I, I remember just fucking around with it. And I just thought it felt really cool. And it seemed like it would be fun to learn. So uh, a couple months later, I ended up asking one for Christmas. And I ended up getting one. So simple as that. But I was, it was right around when I started listening to Blink and Sum 41 and New Found Glory, stuff like that, that had like simple stuff, but fun stuff at the same time. But I mean, I was also listening to a lot of stuff like Rush and other bands like that too. So I mean, I've always wanted to do something like that. Um, Bruce, you're killing me here. You're like the 48th person to ask me what kind of camera do I use to shoot videos. It's a Canon power shot. It's a piece of shit, but it works. Uh, Harry says, who's your favorite Marvel character? Um, I don't know if I really have one. I mean, they're all cool for different reasons. I mean, my go-to is for that answer is usually Thor. Um... But I feel like I liked him more before the movies came out. Just like the idea of Thor, I like the most. I feel like it's, he's pretty cool. Um, I mean, Spider-Man's cool. 
Uh, Iron Man I like. Um, but that's probably mostly because of Robert Downey Jr. He just does such a good job in that role. Um, I mean, I guess there might be others too, but I mean, I don't know. I've never been like big on superhero stuff. Not that big anyway. Um, are there any Canadian bands that you like besides Sum 41 and Rush? Um, I think Protest the Hero are Canadian, I think. Um, pretty sure they are. They're really good. Um, none other really stand out. I mean, I, I'm sure I like other bands that are Canadian. I probably just don't realize that they are Canadian. Uh, let's see. Quentin wants to know if I've ever listened to Saves a Day. Um, no. I, I've heard about them a lot, but I've never listened to them. Um, Gage says, what are my expectations on the new uh, NFG album? And will I listen to the new Yellow Card album? Um, I mean, I've been listening to Yellow Card for a few years, and uh, I mean, the last few albums have been good. It's not like they put out another one like Lights and Sounds that just wasn't good. Um, so, I mean, I'll definitely be checking out the new album. Um, but the New Found Glory album, I hope it's good. I mean, I'm sure it'll sound good. I, I doubt it'll sound like it's missing any guitars. Um, but their live show is definitely sounding pretty uh, pretty flat because they haven't had a second guitar. So, I mean, they need to at least get a touring guitar player to really like fatten up the guitar sound because it's definitely lacking. Um, but, I mean, I'll definitely check out the New Found Glory album. I mean, I've been listening to them for... 12 years um, I'm curious to see how the lyrics will be I mean I wouldn't mind a different take on lyrics I mean if it stays relatively the same if they're if they try to make it relatively the same I mean that's cool but um, uh, we'll see <clears throat> um, Kuba wants to know if I like NHL um, as a whole, I mean, it's all right. I don't really get into it. I have a few friends that are huge Bruins fans uh, that go to games and stuff all the time. Um, I don't mind watching it, but I don't watch sports in general. I just really don't have the time for it. Um, I don't know. Just it doesn't really interest me. I mean, I used to watch baseball a lot when I was when I was like ten, but I kind of grew out of that too. Like. My baseball phase started slowing down as my guitar phase started going up. So, um, Sean wants to know if a movie has ever made me cry. Um, I mean, if if something like that's ever gonna make me cry, it's more likely to be a TV show than a movie. Because I feel like, for me personally, I need more than two hours to get really devoted to characters and you know to really care about characters and stuff like that unless it was like I don't know fucking Star Wars or something that has like six movies or something um, but I mean the only movie that really comes to mind that's at least made me close to crying was probably Frequency that was with Dennis Quaid and oh god Jim Caviezel I think his name is um, that was a good movie um, he says, what are some of your favorite 80s songs? Most of my favorite songs are 80s songs. Uh, when it, when it comes to anything like Hall and Oates, Van Halen, The Cars, um, I don't know, there, there's, there's plenty more. Def Leppard had some great songs. Um, I don't know, there, there's too many. If I had to pick one, the, the number one that, like, My number one from the 80s would probably have to be Rush, maybe like Limelight or something. I really love that song. It's always been a favorite. Um, Hall & Oates, Out of Touch is a really good song. Um, I don't know. There's there's too many to really narrow it down. Um, don't really understand this question. Foot Switch, yay or nay? Yay, I guess. 
Do I like David Kennedy from Boxcar Racer and Ava? Yeah, why not? <laughs> he seems alright. Um, I think it's interesting that he really, really gets into coffee these days. What's my favorite candy? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I like a lot of different candies. Um, Mounds is really good. Crunch is great. Um, M&M's are pretty good go-to every now and then. Um, I mean, peanut butter cups are always good. Something like that. <clears throat> um, Joel says, I'm a bass player. Is the Mark Hoppus bass really worth the money? Um, wouldn't a Fender P bass with Seymour Duncan quarter pounders be the same? Minus the J bass body. Um, more or less, yeah. I mean, if you're at least comparing it to the original version, um, before he, like, he, he kind of, like, swapped the pickup, so, um, it supposedly helped the, like, the string definition or something on, like, the higher strings. Um, but, I mean, more or less, it would be similar. I mean, you could probably find a used Mark Hoppus bass, on eBay for the amount of regular P base would be if you if if it didn't have the Seymour Duncan's already and you're going to upgrade them. Um, it was a really really nice quality base. I had the one that I'm pretty sure was Swamp Ash, I think, and it had like a see-through green color, which was beautiful. Um, but for me personally, it was just the neck that I didn't really like. I much preferred J base necks that are uh, a lot thinner, at least at the nut. And, I mean, if, you, if you've if you played P-Bases before, um, I mean, it's it's a nice P-Base. I mean, you'd have to really want Mark Hoppus' bass because it's Mark Hoppus for it to really be worth the money, I think. Because otherwise, you might as well just get a P-Base. Um, let's see. Miguel asks, if you were going to buy a third amp, what would it be? Um, well, I mean, I got my Mesa. I got my 5150, which will probably be coming home soon. Um, there's there's definitely some great amps out there. The new PRS Archon sounds really good. Um, I would love an orange. Def I would love to have like a like the dual dark 50 or dual, dual dark 100 but those are really expensive um or even like a rocker verb or something you know something a little different um or even maybe like a jcm 800 uh those do sound really good um something like that i mean i don't know something something like that um, am I planning on buying a nice acoustic? Um, I mean, not really. I don't play acoustic enough to really justify spending a few grand on one. Um, I mean, if somehow I got a really good deal on one and I had a lot of money to kind of throw around, then why not? I love a Taylor. Taylor guitars are amazing. I've played a few Martins that feel amazing. Um, I almost bought a Martin uh, within like the last year. I think it was like, I think it was around a thousand dollars, and it it played beautifully. But I don't know. I ended up doing something else with the money. I don't remember exactly. Um, I think I ended up buying the the Daphne Blue Tom DeLonge Strat instead. I think that's what I did. Um, but I don't know. I just don't play acoustic enough. Um, a couple questions from Dylan. What's your favorite comic book character, hero and villain? I I kind of answered this already. Um, I don't really have a lot of. Uh, I don't I don't have much opinion when it comes to comic book stuff because I don't really listen or listen. I don't really uh, read comic books. Um, but if I had to pick like a go-to. Um, 
probably Thor, I guess. And I don't know if he's technically a villain, but I always thought, um, I think his name's Galactus was really cool. I don't even remember if, uh, I think that's Marvel. He, like, destroys planets or some shit. I always thought that was cool. I used, I saw him on, like, some of the Marvel video games I used to play. Um, so that's cool. Um, Wolverine's cool, too. I forgot to mention that. Um, do you, do I think nine-string guitars are overrated? Because I do. Um, I don't think they're overrated. I just feel like if it's something that you can really find use for, then more power to you. I mean, I couldn't even conceive how I would play a nine string. I, I couldn't even figure that out. Seven string was hard to figure out too. Um, so I mean, two more strings after that would, it, it just wouldn't work for me personally. Um, but I mean, there's plenty of players out there that look for more versatility and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, why not? Um, but I feel like you'd really need the right type of amp for it because, I mean, a lot of these amps, like say like my Mesa or something similar to that, I mean, it's not meant for playing, for lack of a better word, bass guitars. I mean, when you're playing strings that heavy and stuff that low frequency, it's basically a bass guitar. And it's not really meant for this sort of setup. I mean, you really need something that was made for the really higher frequencies um, like guitars and then like the really low ones like basses so I mean I don't really know what kind of amp would be really good for that I don't know what superpowers would I want um, visibility would be cool I'd fuck around with that a lot um, I, I'd love to be able to read people's minds yeah, I take back the invisibility one. I would, I'd like to read people's minds, because I'd love to fuck with people with that. That would be fun. Um, how do I feel about the Deadpool test footage? I hadn't gotten around to watching it. I heard about it, but I didn't, I didn't watch it. Have I ever checked out the band Digital Summer? Nope, I have not. Uh, Jord Titley. Ask what acoustic guitars I would recommend. Um, the only thing I can really recommend is going to a store and playing whatever you can and getting an idea of what feels best for you because I've owned a few acoustic guitars and some of them, I mean, they feel each one feels completely different between models. I mean, I had an ovation, <coughs> sounded great, but it was really hard to play. And it was fucking huge. And I ended up selling that. I mean, the only reason I still have that guitar over there, I mean, because it's so cheap, there's no point in me selling the damn thing anyway. Um, I mean, it's okay, but I mean, you gotta find something that sounds the way you want it to sound and feels the way you want it to feel because, I mean, I could recommend anything, but it, it, it'll be better for me compared to to what you like. I mean, I don't know. Andrew Radcliffe, another question that I get a lot. Who do I prefer between the Blink side projects? It's always going to be Boxcar Racer. Um, am I excited for the new Blink album? Honestly, no. Uh, I mean, when it's getting close to when it's coming out, then yeah, I'll be excited, but we don't even know when it's going to be out. I mean, it's probably going to be out like half halfway through next year or something like that so I mean it's really so early to really for me to even be excited about it I mean I'm not one of these fangirls that fucking wets their panties every time Tom DeLonge puts a message on Facebook saying oh Blink's not dead you know we're still alive we're coming out with music eventually you know like well no shit <laughs> uh, I don't know Nathaniel says, I have the same Fender Jazzmaster as you, but I have the stock pickups in it, and I'm not a huge fan. Neither was I. What other pickups would you recommend for a pop-punk sound? Um, assuming you don't want to break the bank, um, some sort of Seymour Duncan, maybe a JB. Uh, an Invader might work. Um, maybe some other 
Seymour Duncan's. Um, I love, absolutely love my bare knuckle Stockholm P90 in that guitar. It's a humbucker sized P90, so it fits in the bridge position. But holy shit, that fucking pickup rules! It rules. Joel says, "Can you play drums?" No. Holly Jane wants to know what country I would like to visit the most. I wouldn't mind visiting anywhere, to be honest. I think England would be cool. Um, I mean, somewhere around maybe like Italy or France. Anywhere around there would be cool, too. Um, I'd like to check out Canada. Canada would be neat. Um, maybe maybe Japan. I don't know. I feel like I'd really have trouble figuring out what's going on there, though. Um, but they've got, like, so many cool, like, electronic stores and video game stores and stuff like that. That would be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Andrew says, how do you feel about Mar Marvel movies? Fucking Marvel. This is the Marvel fucking video right here. Um, they're all right. I mean, they're usually pretty good. I mean, I don't, there, I haven't seen any that I disliked. Um, although the last Thor wasn't amazing. Um, do I plan on seeing Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, in theaters, maybe. Um, I don't know. If I'm really, really bored and the timing's right, then yeah, maybe I'll go see it. Uh, Cole says, besides Michael or Dwight, Who's your favorite office character? Dwight's never my favorite anyway, but Michael easily would be. Um, but if I couldn't pick Michael... Um, God. I mean, it's got to be Jim. I mean, the pranks he does and everything are just perfect. Um, I don't know. I mean, I like all the characters... But Michael made that show. 100%. He made that show. Uh, William says, Is the Fender American Standard Bridge with the offset saddles any better or worse than a regular bridge? Um, from what I've heard, the offset saddles aren't that great. I mean, I'm not really sure why. Um, I do feel like it's a little weird when the screw's not going directly through like through the middle of the saddle um, <clears throat> but I mean I don't know I don't feel like I personally had any run-ins with that I don't know if I've had any guitars with offset ones um, but I know people online say to stay away from them so I mean I don't know uh, Colby says what's a good amp that doesn't cost much but is good quality um, I don't know, maybe like a Black Star. Black Star's got some decent, decent amps. Um, I'd stick away or I'd steer away from like the the lower end Marshalls. I feel like they're not that great. Um, <clears throat> PV's got some great amps too. I would I would check out some PV amps. <clears throat> um, Matthew says, "What's the most difficult song you can play?" I don't know. I don't even remember half the songs that I've learned <laughs> throughout the last <coughs> like 12, 13 years. I don't remember. Um, I mean, I've played... I mean, I've learned some Paul Gilbert stuff, but I mean, there's always been like little parts in it that I couldn't figure out. Um, Four Year Strong, I mean, some of those songs don't sound that difficult, but some of them are pretty... Uh, pretty tough um and then I've I mean I've I've covered some stuff like some Rush songs some some Iron Maiden songs that weren't that easy maybe something like that uh let's see Lance says since you have that Cloud Strife poster stuck on your wall that one he's actually fighting Chrono from Chrono Cross or uh, Chrono Cross, Chrono Trigger. Um, yeah, I love that thing. Um, 
What was your favorite Final Fantasy game? If I've played anything aside from Final Fantasy VII. And do I think a Final Fantasy VII remake would be cool? I think a remake would be awesome. And I would play it immediately. Um, and, I mean... I always understood... I mean, people saying that Final Fantasy VII was the best. I'm like, okay, I mean... I don't really have any reason to say that it's not. Um, because I didn't beat that game. Or even get more than like three or four hours into it until like a year, year and a half ago, and I'm very glad I did, because it was the best that I've played, and I've played a lot of them, um, but Final Fantasy VII was as close to perfect as I think Final Fantasy is ever going to be, um, the characters were great, I mean, the graphics aren't amazing, but I mean, it's it's pretty easy to, to look past them, um, they do have like a, a sort, sort of like old school charm to them, I guess. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy 7 was great. If I had to pick a favorite other than 7, I would either say 6 or 9. Um, 9 was really, really fun. I liked that one a lot. That one was another one that I played pretty recently. Maybe in the last like 3, 4 years I played that one. And it was just really cool. I liked how you could... Um, learn skills by equipping certain uh, certain equipment um, and then once you gathered like enough skill points while having that on you automatically knew the skill forever and it was kind of like that in uh, a Lost Odyssey game um, not a Lost Odyssey but that's, that's the name of the game uh, that I played on 360 that was another really good game that was basically like a Final Fantasy game and that one was great. Um, I mean, like I said, I've played a lot of them. Three was... I, I haven't played one or two. Um, Final Fantasy three was good. I mean, I didn't think it was amazing. Four was definitely great. Um, I do think it's a little overrated. Um, but it is really good. I mean, I can't deny that. Five was a lot of fun. I did like five. Six, obviously, I said it was one of my favorites. I tried playing 8. I mean, I, I put maybe like 10 hours into that, maybe even more. And I just couldn't get into it. Um, 9 was amazing, like I said. 10, I couldn't get into. I tried that one too. And it's just... I don't know. It definitely wasn't the graphics. I mean, I know they were doing like a HD remake on that, but... I don't know. Like The story just seemed fucking boring, and I really didn't like the overall feel of the game. Um, never played 11, never played 12, although I heard 12 was okay. 13 was... it was alright. I mean, I understand completely why people don't like it, but I mean, I at least had fun with what it was. Um, but it wasn't that great. 13-2, kind of the same thing. I mean, it wasn't that great. I mean, I had a decent amount of fun playing it, but I wouldn't waste my time playing it again, that's for sure. Especially with the ending. The ending was a joke. And I won't even waste my time with 13-3. So that's pretty much where I'm at. I never played 14 either. <coughs> but some of the, the spin-offs were really good. I never played any of the tactics ones. Um, there were some original uh, Game Boy ones that were really fun. Final Fantasy Adventure, Final Fantasy Legend 1, 2, and 3 were all cool. Alright, enough Final Fantasy. And that actually might be my last question? No. Uh, I got two more questions. Uh, another one from Matt. He says, What's my opinion on the Jam Up app and is it worth buying? Um. I definitely think it's worth buying if you're planning on recording stuff. Um, I've gotten some really good tones out of it that I'm actually working on stuff with. And uh, the people that I've shown them to really like the tone. I was using uh, a Keith Marrow amp and like some other stuff. Uh, but they have a ton of options if you upgrade with uh, like the, the extra packs. Um, 
and I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of stuff on sale right now so if you're gonna do anything I would do it now I mean I do think it's worth it but it does take some time getting used to and you do need the little adapter plug so you can actually plug your guitar into uh, your iPad or iPhone or whatever so um, and that's like 20 bucks too so I mean I think overall over like with all the shit I've spent on jam up I've, I've probably spent like a hundred dollars because I bought like most of the packs and I bought like bias which lets you fuck around with the amps and um, I think I bought like a couple other little things but I mean it all depends on what you're gonna get out of it so I think it's I think it's a good program and final question Tim asks do I like Bayside's self-titled album um, I gotta remember what's even on that album I think devotion and desire and stuff like that um, yeah, Devotion Desires on there. Um, Blame It on Bad Luck is really good. I like that one a lot. Um, Torches of the Damned. I can't remember that song 100%. Um, they look like Strong Hands. I remember that one was that was pretty good. I mean, overall, I mean, it's not a bad album, I don't think. Um, but I definitely prefer some of their other stuff, like uh, Killing Time. and um, Which one did I really like? I really liked... Um, I don't know. Uh, Sirens and Condolences has some good ones too, um, but I mean they all got, they all have some good stuff on it. But um, I wouldn't say Bayside, uh, the self-titled one. I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Um, then would I ever do a full album guitar cover of Crimson by Alkaline Trio? Um, maybe. I mean, I'd probably rather just do like single songs because I feel like nobody would really watch a full album cover of that, and it would take a lot of work. Um, because, I mean, a lot of my followers, I mean, I can kind of judge what they're going to like and, or what they're even going to watch. I mean, if I put up an Alkaline Trio cover just right now, I'd maybe get two, 250 for views on it, maybe 300. Um, maybe a little more if it was a really well-known song like Mercy Me or something. Um... But if I put up like a Blink cover or a Green Day cover, it could get two or three thousand views in like a day and a half. So I mean, it's all kind of relative. I mean, I love the album, but I'd probably just do some other random songs off the album that I might not have done yet. Um, or if I have some that are really old, I might just redo a couple of them or something. Uh, and how's life? Uh, Life's pretty good. I mean, I can't complain. Um, been fucking around with my guitars a lot. I mean, I finally finished my Silver Strat, which is sitting over there. Um, the Yellow Strat will be done soon, which I'm really happy about. And I actually just found out that my Jazzmaster is done, the white one. Um, that's like Tom DeLonge's obvious guitar. And that all that stuff will be shipped to me. I think I'm supposed to have it like the end of next week, which is really cool because I have some vacation time from work soon. Uh, so if I don't get around to finishing it, uh, like after work or when I have time, I'll be able to just bust it out through, uh, through my time off. So that'd be really awesome. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. And how's the band? Honestly, not that good. Um, the drummer doesn't know it yet, and I know he's not going to watch this video anyway, um, but the the band's not really going anywhere. Um, it's been pretty tough. Um, I mean, we started off really, really quick, and like almost right away we had like five songs ready to do stuff with, and I mean, me and Dave, the guitar player, um, have known each other for a long time, easily at least 10 years, and I mean, we've always been on good terms. Um, and, um, I mean, I didn't know the drummer too well, but I knew enough that I knew there was something to kind of watch out for, because he's really hard to please. I mean, we, we tried like four or five different singers, and 
while me and Dave really just wanted to get out there and do something with any singer, no matter what. I mean, it was really hard to just get the drummer to want to do anything, and it it sucked. So um, we ended up losing our bass player because he started out he started helping out one of his older bands and he started doing that more and more and then he just kept blowing us off and we would we would schedule a practice like a week in advance and he'd call us like the morning of and say that he couldn't get his gear because it was locked in like the other band's practice space and and stupid shit like that he made a lot of excuses and um, I don't know. So I ended up having to tell him to just don't come back, more or less. So, um, and then I mean, we had a guy that looked like he was really into it. I mean, he had a really busy schedule for singing. Um, so I mean, we've only practiced with him a couple times, and it seemed like everything was going good. So. You know, it seemed all right, but then I guess the drummer again was talking to Dave and just like, yeah, we got to find a, a new singer and all this stuff. I mean, he he's trying to be like fucking Britney Spears or something. I don't know how else to really say it, but he, I feel like he, he, he thinks the band's all kind of about him and it's, it's a bit of a problem. So, I mean, me and Dave have been talking about... Um, me and him just working on some stuff and maybe getting like an EP or something out there eventually um, because I mean we do have five songs already more or less in the bag <coughs> so I mean I plan to very soon going to the drummer's house get my 5150 half stack bring it home um, because, I mean, sometimes it's just not worth it. I mean, we've been playing together for almost a year now. And we have almost nothing to show for it because of that. So, I don't know. I just don't feel like really dealing with it anymore. And I've been working on a lot of my own original shit lately anyway. That I wasn't even planning on bringing to the guys. So... It's unfortunate. I mean, it would have been cool to play some shows or do something, but I mean, you get someone that's just not willing to be open-minded and not willing to really compromise. It really fucks up the whole situation. And no one will end up wanting to play with that person. So, I mean, that's kind of what happens. So, that's pretty much it. Let me double check, see if there were any last minute questions. I don't think there were. Um, nope, that was it. So, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, you can always just leave them right in the comments. I'll, I'll answer them if I can. Um, and I'll just see you guys for another Q&A in about a month. So, uh, that's about it. See you later.